Yes, good afternoon one and all and welcome on another episode of our guided book and this is Stephen all the way from the Malampingo Ridge out here in Tarangiro National Park. So today on our guided book we come across a very interesting plant species which is one of my favorite plants which is called the Solanum incanum right here. Uh, many people confuse the Solanum incanum with the Solanum linanum. So Solanum linanum is the Sodom apple. Well, this one here in common name, we call it the bitter tomatoes or bitter apple. So the Sodom apple is strictly poisonous. Well, this species here is not really poisonous, but it has so many uses to us humans as more of the traditional medicine. So they, it grows to about uh, two meters above the ground and it grows in areas with more disturbed soil. So overgrazed. Uh, plains or flood plains anywhere that where the soil is a little bit disturbed then this plant here can really grow very very well so the ones that you've seen right now the the yellow ones these ones are the fruits of the plant all right right there ripe fruit of the plant and this one here is the unripe fruit which is more greeny you know it's unripe fruit of the solanum uh, in canum so the plant itself, like from the top to the bottom of the plant, it has so many uses. If we start with the roots, when you take the roots of this plant here and then you boil them, you know, it can really help you in relieving some stomach pain. So if you have any stomach pains out here in the bush, definitely Solanum incanum can really help you very quickly. What you need to do, take the, the, the roots of this plant, wash them very well, remove all the sand and the, and the soil. And then after that, boil the roots in a very, very good way and after that drink the decoction of the roots so that decoction it can help you to relieve some stomach pain so decoction is what you get after boiling yeah and um if these stems here you can see the stems here right here they're very hard so this one also depends with the uh, certain area so if the area has so much water then the stems can be more of the herbaceous and some places where the soil is more drier then the stems can really be like more woody so Maasai many of the Maasai and some other tribes they still take these stems and use them as the tooth brushing so why do they use the stem as tooth brushing it's because they believe that it has more of the antibacterial effect so the stems of this plant here can really help to cure their teeth problems. So a perfect example is me. My grandma did use this when I was a little guy, when I was like 12 years old, you know. Uh, she came out with a plant. So she took a fruit like this one here, like the ripe one directly there. And then she opened it. So inside this fruit here, there is some tiny seeds inside, as you can see over there, some tiny seeds and these I mean, she, she did separate the tiny seeds from the, uh, the, the greenish fluid like what you're seeing over there, you know. So after that, by separating these uh, tiny seeds, she dried them up in the sun, like for several days. And then she pounded them into more of the flour texture. And then after that, she took the flour into the hole of my tooth. So I had like a tooth hole. Whenever I drink some cold water or in food, then I felt some vibrations over there. So she did that like, I mean, she did something like that for like two weeks and then I was cured completely up to date. I still have my tooth, but I don't feel anything like that anymore. So it, these seeds here can really help uh, to cure your uh, teeth problem. And some people may also use the seeds how? They, they take the seeds, they dry the seeds up and then after that, they burn the seeds. After burning the seeds, they inhale the smoke from the seeds, you know. Or some people will find them using piece of paper doing like <gasps> inhaling that smoke inside your mouth. So the smoke goes in directly like to your tooth and tries to cure or try chases out all the bacteria inside uh, your tooth, which can bring you uh, some nasty problems. So you can see it's more like a tooth uh, problem cure right here. So my grandma did use that more massage and some other tribes they still use the stems as more of the tooth brushing. Uh, the other thing is the, the, the leaves here. So these leaves, you can see that you don't really eat the leaves, eh? but you can use the leaf to treat some kind of skin infections. Eh? So the leaves mostly, the decoction of the leaves or the sap of the leaves. So the sap is the liquid that is found into the leaves without putting any water that liquid inside the plant it's called a sap so you can use it externally on your skin so if you have any kind of burns 
or sores or even these ringworms which are malengelenge and some shillingis on your skin you can use this um these leaves to cure that or even if you have this kind of uh, painful wounds you use the leaves what people do is that they take these leaves especially these ones which are not more uh, more hot enough the, the the tiny ones okay these ones are still soft they, they chew the leaves and then after that they apply it externally on the wounds hmm? painful wounds like that or even other uh, one of those which I mentioned like the sores of the ring wound so any kind of skin infections so none in, in canam can really cure you another important which is quite interesting is that you know back then we didn't have any kind of antivenoms so how do do people used to uh, cure themselves away from the snake bites or something? So Solanum in Canum definitely can cure the snake bites. How? It's that you take the roots of this plant and then you boil them. After boiling them, you drink the decoction of the roots. So the decoction is the liquid that you get away from the boiling. You know, okay. So after some time when you boil something, the decoction, it comes out. So you drink the decoction of these roots here. You drink that. And then after that, you take the roots themselves, the ones that you did boil the first place, take the roots and then you chew them. By chewing them, you are getting that sap. So you, I mean, you, you swallow the sap of the, of the roots. And then after that, take these leaves again, chew them or try squeeze them until that liquid comes out of the leaves. And then you, you apply externally on that snake bite wound. And after sometime like maybe two days it said that it can definitely cure your snake bite that is quite very 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 interesting for me another use of this plant is that uh, it has some sorts of flowers these flowers i cannot really see them on this plant right now here yeah? maybe they did shade off but the flowers are more uh, kind of purple you know small small flowers then people are using that flower as lucky charm people could put the flowers into their businesses like a shop so as to, to attract more people to their business or people they were using these flowers when they they did have long safaris you know some people don't really uh, like to travel through by cars for a long long time they might have some kind of stomach pains or headache or something like that so when you take the flowers of this plant and hold them uh, put them in your pocket anywhere just just let them be with you it can really help you with that kind of long safari so you can see it's quite an interesting useful um, for us here as humans and another important of this plant it's the leaves themselves again which is my favorite part of it is that you know back then we didn't have any kind of um, any kind of transportation so people are like you know doing this kind of long safaris by walking yeah so through walking there were no washrooms outside there you know people were just going around the bushes like that traveling long long distances so they were taking these leaves the leaves the texture of the leaves are quite very soft when you try touch them or when you try uh rub them they don't really scratch on your skin so the leaves were used as the toilet peppers quite interesting which is my favorite part of it you know toilet peppers as leaves here so that means if you don't have any money to buy toilet papers or even if you are out of toilet papers out in the bush you come across solanum in canum definitely it's going to help you as a toilet paper ingredient so you can take some of it which i'm going to do it right now for me <laughs> i think they're going to be useful because i'm still walking i'm still finding some things so as i can bring them to you guys so i'll have some of these leaves inside my pocket right now I think they're gonna be useful very very much and of course I'll collect some if I come across another Solanum in Canum. So that's the more importances of the Solanum in Canum. So it, it is being used in quite a variety of stuffs. Even these fruits here, some people in Uganda or some I mean some tribes there they still use these ones here to make good soup out of it. You know, they boil the the the, the fruits and then they drink the soup. It's very very amazing. They they sometimes mix with I mean Android bananas the green bananas like that and it becomes really really quite cool so thank you very much for your attention and this is what I wanted to tell you about the Solana Minkanam I hope you enjoy it and see you again on our next episode